Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be talking about creating attractive typography effects using the Highlight Text widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We're on the widget's landing page, and we can see some examples of the effects you can create with it. It lets you stylize text so it seems highlighted. We can see examples of different text styles and how they look with this effect. Also, you can add the Highlight Text widget to any section and use it in combination with other elements like buttons and images. Now, let's see how we can use it for ourselves. Head over to the back and in the Elementor sidebar, start searching for the Highlighted Text widget. You don't have to type out the whole name, it pops right up. Drag it over to the page and there we are. We can immediately see it comes with some placeholder text included. But don't worry, we'll be replacing all of this shortly. And you can do that by entering your own text here in the text field. But the interesting option here is the highlight text position. This is what lets us determine which words will be highlighted. The way it works is this. You set the number of the starting word and the ending word. So we have the range from 3 to 5 and 9 to 11. So the first word that's highlighted is our third word, and the highlight ends at our fifth word. And the same goes for our ninth word and our eleventh word. So, as you can see, you can highlight multiple strings within your text. All you need to do is separate each range of words with a comma. In our example, we have the range 3 to 5 and the range 9 to 11, separated with a comma. Now, I'm going to set some content of my own here, and then we're going to change these numbers. Now, the highlight that was here by default no longer suits my content, so I need to replace it. The words I want to stress are the following. I want my content highlight to start with my third word, but I want it to end with my seventh word. And there we are, the text that stands out. Now, with this option here, we can choose to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, like so. This lets us copy it for use elsewhere on the site. Ok, let me put it back, I won't be needing it. Now, those are all the options we have in the Content tab, so let's move on to the Style tab. And here we have the following options. The first one is Alignment. We can change our text alignment from left to center or right. I'm going to make mine centered. There we go. Then, we can pick the text tag that will apply to our entire text. By default, that's the P tag, the one for paragraphs. However, I think it's going to be easier to track all the changes if I make my text bigger. Which is why I'll switch this to H1. There we go. Much easier to track now. The next option we have is the text color. It lets us adjust the color of the text that isn't highlighted. You can change the text to any color you want, like this. However, I want my text to be black, so that's what I'm going to set. Just a moment. There we go. Now the following option contains a whole subset of options. And these let us determine things like the font family that will be used on our text. You can browse this list with over a hundred fonts. Or you can type if you know the name of your font and search for it. I'm going to leave this set to default. Then we can adjust the size of our font. Simply type in a value and you will be able to change it. Oh, this is way too small, I'm going to pop it back. There we go. Following that, we have the weight option. In here, we can pick whether our text will be normal or bold. Or use one of these number values to set it somewhere in between. After this, we have the Text Transform option. It lets us turn our text uppercase or lowercase, capitalize each word, or make it normal, meaning the way we typed it in. Following that, we have the Style option. There we have the possibility to make our text look normal, which is our default, or turn it italic, or alternatively oblique. These two look a lot alike, and the effect you get with them depends on the font you use. Ok, I'm going to put this back the way it was. After that, we have the text decoration option. In here, we can pick whether our text will be underlined, whether it will have an overline, 
whether it's going to get the line through it, or if it's going to go with no decoration at all, which is our default. After that, we have the line height option. Since I have text across two lines, I can show you how it would look if I were to change this to, say, 2. The default value here is in M's, but you can change that to pixels and get a very different effect. In either case, I'm going to put this back. The last option we have is for letter spacing. With it, you can adjust the distance between your letters. Okay, this is way too much, I'm going to pop it back. There. And that's it for the typography, so let's see the next set of options. And these are the really interesting ones. The first option here is the highlighted text color. It lets us pick which color the text here, that's highlighted, will be. By default it's white, and I'm going to change it to black so it matches the rest of the surrounding text. Now don't worry, this looks like a block on my page now, but I'll be changing the highlight color in a moment so it will all make sense. And I'm going to do that using this next option, the highlight text background color. We can see that the default is black, and I don't want to keep it because, well, my text won't be visible with it. So, let's change it. There we go, much nicer. A lovely jade green shade. And we have two more options in the settings here. One is the highlight top offset, and the other is the highlight bottom offset. These two let us adjust how much of the space in our line the highlight will take up. The value is in percentages, so be careful how much you set here. If you put 100, you'll make your highlight disappear entirely. But if you set 50, only the top half of the highlight will disappear. So the highlight top offset option can help you remove a part of your highlight from the top down. Now, if I were to do the same with my bottom offset, the bottom part of my highlight would disappear. In this case, where I set the bottom offset to 50, only the top half of my highlight will remain. Now you can always find an in-between solution, and I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to set my bottom offset at the very edge of the text, and for me that's going to be 23%. Then I'll also bring in my top offset down a bit as well, it's going to look neater at the end. There we are. A very pared down highlight that still makes the text stand out. And that's it for our style options. Now, the advanced tab has several useful options for margins and responsiveness settings and things like that, but it's there for every Elementor widget, it's not specific to this one, so we won't be covering it in this video. And that's it for our highlight text widget. Now, let's take one last look at the landing page. And here we are. Hopefully this video has helped you to see how easy creating text effects like this can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its highlighted text widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching!